Welcome back, everyone. So, following on from uh, our tradition of keeping abreast of all the latest models that have been released, I've got a new one for you today. This one is Cos XL. It's from Stability AI, or it's on their account on Hugging Face. It's a gated model, which means non-commercial research use at this stage. So a little bit like Stable Cascade, another experiment. Okay, so I'm just going to read this out because there's no better way to explain it. It's tuned from the XL 1.0 base to use a cosine continuous EDM V predictive schedule. I think that's V predictive. I say V pred. I don't know. The most notable feature of this schedule change is the capacity to produce a full color range from pitch black to pure white, alongside more subtle improvements to the model's rate of change to images across each step. There's also edit stable diffusion. So there's two checkpoints here. And COSXL edit is the same, but it's also upgraded to perform instructed image editing. So they've used instruct picks to picks um, approach with this second model. This model takes a source image as an input, interprets the prompt as an instruction for how to alter the image. So if you remember control net or uh, the very old picks to picks, it's sometimes called P to P or uh, IP to P. The, the point is um, it's image editing. So you can just type what you want, make it watercolor, and it will make the image watercolor. It's really good at following the original composition. Um, so it's kind of like a style transfer. So because we look a lot at style transfer with a lot of the work I do, um, this is another example of an advancement here because it's like much simpler. You just load it up and off you go. Um, so it's recommended to use Stable Swarm, but Comfy UI is fine. So here, COS Stable Diffusion XL1 can also be used as a regular checkpoint. So what I've been finding is that when you use the normal base, so just COS XL base, um, and then you load in a LoRa that was trained on the original SDXL, they load great. Just make sure you're loading Clip G and Clip L in your workflow. We'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, we've already covered it on this channel before. So it, it, you'll notice an error which says missing clip L if you have the problem in your logs. So for an example on how to use edit stable diffusion, see this comfy example. I've already been through it. I've made a few small changes, mostly to include clip L. They only seem to ever use clip G in the default examples. So something I've been starting to do is adding in uh, that. Uh, I do think I'll probably have to go back and overhaul some of my workflows as well because I tried to keep them simple. But if we're being honest, SDXL does need that. So if I just quickly show you what I mean, I've already covered it on this channel many times, but normally you would just have a, te a text encoder that would work for 1.5 or 2.1, and they both go into your uh, positive and negative on whatever case sample you have, okay? Um, but what I'm doing here is basically collapsing it and then I'm attaching a primitive to the G and the L so that we can just run the same prompt through both clip encoders. It works great. And that's what it, what, what, yeah. Anyway, so I set it up like that. It's pretty simple. You just take out the uh, the old ones and put these ones in, hook up the clip and you're away. Um, I also added a LoRa loader to this because it was nice to be able to see that the, you know, uh, LoRa's can still load and work great. That's the image input there actually went to went for watercolors so um right so that's that default workflow let's just have a quick look at my model page so on the model page what i've done is i've linked to the hugging face and to the base cos excel and the cos edit you just put them both in your checkpoints folder so models checkpoints for both all right um and yeah we've added in the clip g and the l so when you look inside the new pack, there's four workflows, two HD versions, which have the iterative upscaler that we use. And then, the, oh, something's wrong here. Uh-oh. So, okay, one of them's got a boog. So in order to hook that up, what we do is we go from this conditioning to the positive and from this negative to the negative. And then it's fixed. And then we should get our iterative upscale. 
Oh, I might have to resave that. Is that one saved? Yeah. Oz XL Basic HD is broken. All right, well, I'll fix that and get it updated. All right, let's just do that now. Okay, so looking at the pack, what we've got here is we've got the, as I say, edits and basic. So we're currently looking at the edits. Now, uh, just for anybody that's interested, this node is a group node. All right. Um, and so if I just pull it away quickly and explode it. No, wrong button. Convert to nodes. This is what it actually is. Okay. So this is a group node. If you right click, you can convert to group node, which will clean up your uh, complex workflows and whatnot into a single node. It's quite cool. But just so people know, because you won't be able to find that node if you search for it, but it's a, it's a, a group workflow. So it's a slightly different, but it does clean up the, uh, does clean up what's going on here. And like I said, if we just sort of look at what's going on, um, it's just put this all into a sampler node for us. Yeah. So I believe we just, just right click. I may have right clicked the wrong one, but enter a group name, enter a group name. Let's call it IP2P SDXL K sampler. There it is. Now, obviously, when you right click, you can go manage group node and there's a whole bunch of options here. Most common one is actually when there's no output, like see here, it has an output uh, latent. Sometimes people, when they put these together, they forget to connect an image out. And so you'd have to actually go to your sampler, go to your output, and then make sure that those are checked. But I'm sure we'll check this in future because this is a pretty cool feature. Anyway, so this is like a way of collapsing everything down a bit. And I think you can like rename everything and stuff. It was much better before. So I just wanted to explain what that was just in case anybody got confused about it because it's something you don't often see. But anyway, if we take a look at the basic, all I've got is a LoRa loader with the SDXL encoder, uh, empty latent. It's very simple into a K sampler and off we go. And the reason for this was to see what's happening with uh, LoRa's, which have been trained on SDXL. And it works. Actually, sometimes you're getting slightly better images out of it, which is interesting. Probably the effect of the cosine. Um, and so there, this is no triple latent. This is just a single pass. And that's come out pretty good. So anyway, I want to keep this short because there's only four workflows in the pack. So mainly it was just to announce there's a new research model called COSXL. Seems to be cosine continuous SDXL. So that would be where they got the COS from. Um, like I said, I put a workflow pack up here. Uh, the edit is basically for editing and restart, restyling and retargeting the images. And then the um, base model is seems like an improved SDXL, to be to be honest. Um, I'm getting better images out of it at a higher zero shot rate, if you would call it that. So make sure to check this out. If you've got SDXL LoRa's, try running them with it. See how your outputs look might be surprised like i said i've been finding that they're pretty clean there's not a lot of uh jank or noise or anything like that it looks pretty good it's made me a little bit asian here but uh it was a yoji shinkawa that was one thing sometimes when you use an artist name to target a you know make it more like this it will if it's a portrait it will make you look more like the artist <laughs> so it made me look like yoji shinkawa there rather than doing his art style um but i did a whole bunch of other ones um i just wanted to see what it were whether it was good at doing that uh uh sumi e ink style anyway so that's all i've got for you um thanks for checking out the last video uh it's been a blast keeping up with the joneses on all these latest developments uh drop by the discord if you get a chance i do st put stuff up there a little bit earlier because as i say it takes a bit of time to make the videos and feel free to show your work there too i love to see it so thanks to the guys that have been doing that 
um, eventually I want to look at some of the stuff that people submit. So if there's more stuff to look at, I can do something with that. So the pack has everything in it. The only reason I'm leaving VE1 up is so that the screenshots don't get deleted. Uh, you know, V3, if, if, if the next one will have like more complex workflows, but I'm hoping that you guys are at the point where I don't need to make every single workflow because we've done that in the past, but I'm, I'm happy to do it, you know, put up the basics and then you can see how to get running quickly. So there you go. Right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.